and uh, welcome to this installment of Frankie and Mary here in Ashland. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations at the Senior Center or seen any of my seminars, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Ashland, that means they wanna stay there. They don't wanna move away. They don't wanna to go to San Diego with their kids. No, they wanna stay in Ashland. So the question is, who do you need to know if you identify with Frank and Mary? Who do you need to know and what are the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right there in Ashland forever? So my co-host is a person that most people do know, Steve Mitchell, who has now been on the board of Selectmen for a while, right? Uh, and and agreed, we've been doing these shows now, I think for a couple of years. Yeah. And he has as his guest, probably for, for folks, folks who are at, go to the senior center, a familiar face. Um, but we're going to talk to her. So whom do we have today, Steve? So uh, actually, Arthur, believe it or not, it's almost been a, it's been a decade of being on the select board. Oh, so oh my God. Talk about how time flies. Time flies. Uh, right. But, uh, but we're really, we're, we're pleased today to have uh, Candy Wilson, who is our outreach coordinator at, uh, for elder services at the community center. And Candy's been, been, uh, at the community center for several years in a couple of different capacities. And, uh, but she specifically, she's gonna talk about some programs that she's initiated and created and worked on. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is of course, introduce Candy Wilson to uh, all of our viewers and welcome. Uh, welcome to the Frank and Mary show. And uh, Candy, give us a little background. You know, Ashland resident, you know, who are you? You've been here for a while. You know, yeah. A little, so, little so I've been in Ashland since 2001. I have two teenage boys um, in the high school. Um, I, my, interesting, my career is not in elder services at all. <laughs> my career was in uh, advertising and marketing um, and decided once I had children, I would stay home, stayed home with them until they became teens. And then I decided. I want an easy job <laughs> and took on, <laughs> took on uh, the van driver uh, here at the, community, at the community center for the seniors. And I absolutely adored driving the seniors to their appointments or wherever. And then the opportunity arose where the uh, outreach coordinator position came uh, available and it was offered to me. And I thought about it long and hard. Did I really want to take that on? <laughs> and I decided, sure, why not? And it's the perfect job for me and it's interesting everybody says the same exact thing so um I really enjoy helping seniors and advocating for them so what is what does an outreach coordinator do so basically some of my role responsibilities well they've shifted since the pandemic um but some of my responsibilities are really offering resources to uh seniors to their families um, I've also, uh, in the last year and a half, became dementia practitioner certified. Um, so I help those that um, may have family members that have dementia or caregivers that have dementia and offering them resources and services that, that are available in the community. Um, also offer any legal advice. You know, we, well, I don't give legal advice, but I offer this resources for legal advice right. um, for seniors and basically just here to help them in any capacity that they need. Yeah, um, so I, I assume you've been reasonably busy. Uh, you know, certainly recently with the, uh, with the vaccination program. Yeah, we've been incredibly busy. Yeah, we just had a clinic a couple of weeks ago. Um, we collaborated with surrounding towns and the, we spent a very good portion, I don't know, three or four days just calling our residents trying to schedule their appointments uh, for our clinic for the 75 and above. Um, so we're still get, receiving phone calls because it's a very challenging website as everybody knows. Um, so, um, you know, we unfortunately we're not able to make appointments for them currently, but we can certainly uh, provide them with the 211 phone number that they can, you know, reach out and get them on a waiting list. Yeah, so, that's great. It's been busy. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, so you, 
what we'd like to have hear from you is, you know, there's one program in particular that was your brainchild. Uh, you created, you, you, you uh, uh, were able to receive a grant and it's in, it, it's in the process of uh, getting uh, rolled out. So can you speak to, to that to, uh, for, for our friends, Frank and Mary? Sure. So currently we, well, when the pandemic hit and the entire country shut down, um, one of my goals, I thought, well, how are these seniors going to connect outside of their homes? Um, you know, they don't necessarily, lots of them that don't have the ability or the access to connect with even their family and friends other than maybe the telephone. So I thought as time went on, like April, May, you know, is there any way that we could connect seniors and, and internet, you know, with a, with a device, internet access, and maybe give them some training on how to even just use Zoom on an app, you know, say an iPad, and connect them with their family and friends or even their doctors, because one of the biggest pieces that um, was mentioned just last summer was that uh, people in general, adults in general, were not connecting, and seniors included, were not connecting to their doctors and their health was put in the a lesser priority. Um, so I thought, okay, well, how do, we, how do I get our community connected to their family, friends, and through doctor, our telehealth, and even why not some, you know, programming or activities to, to keep them busy because they were so fearful to leave their home. Uh, many of them were very even fearful to just go for a walk. So knowing that we didn't have the resources in our capacity to pay for something like that, I researched and researched ways to uh, find a grant that might be available to, um, that I could apply for. So as time went on, I finally was able to find one through the Metro West Health Foundation and they granted us $24,000 to purchase devices, uh, internet access, and also um, what's uh, out of New York City, it's called Virtual Senior Center that offers thousands of activities, uh, programs, and just numerous uh, offerings to seniors to keep active and busy. Um, so we are in the process. Uh, it's been a challenge, unfortunately, to um, purchase devices right now. Um, as we all know, many of the educators are teaching remotely. So we're, we're we're pushing to get our devices, but we've already contracted with Comcast for our internet access through in, uh, their program um, that's offered to everybody, really. It's a $10 a month program. I don't know how long they're running it for, but it's for anybody that is uh, on the lower income that may you know, receive any kind of housing assistance, uh, SNAP benefits, uh, fuel assistance, they can apply for this program and it's called Comcast Essentials and uh, Virtual Senior Center through self-help um, is who we've connected with and contracted with. So hopefully we'll be able to roll this out in the next month um, to some of our, our folks at Senior Housing and we can connect them in ways that they, and we're gonna offer training as well. Um, so we'll, this will hopefully connect them in ways that they never thought they'd be able to connect. And I think that this going forward, even if we do open up to the community, I think there's still always going to be that need um, for people to want to connect. So for instance, just being in the comfort of their own home and wanting to be face-to-face -face connecting with their families that might not live here in the state is such a nice way for them to connect. So they can, it'll be a loaner program and we'll always have it. So um I also wanted to add, I just actually applied for another grant uh, for additional 14 more devices. Um, not necessarily with the internet connection and the um, virtual senior center, but just the ability to have these on hand for people to loan them out and to use them because um, some of our senior housing does have internet access. So it'll be an opportunity for them to connect. So I'm really excited about it and I hope um, We've kind of advertised a little bit out there, but I'm really going to pump this through in the next month to get it really out there and get more people. I've already got a list of folks that are on our list waiting for this program to launch. So I'm uh, excited. That's awesome. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, now, there's a name for your program. Yes. And so, so tell, us, tell us the name and what it stands for. 
Okay, so I came up with um, Aid for Older Adults, Ashland Aid, which is A-I-D-E, and that stands for Activities, Internet Connection, Devices, and Education. So the education piece would be for us to train them. Um, they can also learn something. They can learn a new language if they wanted to on the Virtual Senior Center. Um, and this will also connect them too with our new activities coordinator, Anna. She's gonna be ramping up some programming that will be virtual. And I'm certain that this will be another way for them to connect with us here as well. So it'll That's be great. Just, this yeah. is just terrific. It's terrific. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell me, so this is the first time I, I've heard about this and it's just really yeah. exciting. So, so how many, can you tell me again, remember now, Steve is more, he's a young guy, so he's more internet savvy. I'm a little slow, right? So, so how many iPads are you getting? So we just learned that right now the iPad supply, unfortunately, is um, has declined. So we're now actually researching getting a different type of a device for right now in the immediate mm -hmm. needs, but we're still going to push for the iPads. Um, for the latter needs. So just to get the ball rolling, I think we're going to look at the um, Amazon Fire, I think is what we're looking at right now. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly if somebody has any other ideas, certainly let me know. Um, but we're looking to get, originally we're going to get 19 for the grant and then 14 additional that I just applied for. But this is actually going to bump it up even more. If I get some uh, Amazon Fires, they're a lot cheaper. So this could actually ramp up to getting even more. So there'll yeah. be a lot. And when you have those, so this is a loan program so that somebody could- be a loan would, program. And would somebody pick that up therefore at the, at the senior center and it would be for, and, and how long will be the loan? loan how do you, how long do you imagine the loan? For a year. Program? They could have the iPad for a year. I get it. So you don't yeah. think you're gonna have seniors fighting each other over these, uh, you know, rang over to their house and I want that iPad. <laughs> that's a really good, this could be very popular, you know? Yeah. That's a great. Yeah, and, and so and tell me about the 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 um, the you know, what they called the virtual senior center. Yeah. Now is that something that they that the seniors then would need to sign up for, and is it only available through the folks that have got these iPads? So how does the, that? How does so that the work? grant the grant that I received is specifically for this program, and it's good till January of next year. So they oh. can access this virtual senior center until January of next year. Um, I see. We've so you kind of bought a given number of like subscriptions almost yep. to the to the virtual senior center. Correct. So I, I have see. twenty. I have twenty two subscriptions to that virtual senior center. And so, Candy, if somebody has, let's assume they have their own devices, yep. and they're they're wired, can they subscribe to the virtual senior center as well on their own? Absolutely, and I'm happy to share that information okay. with them. They're welcome to contact me. I am happy to share that with them. Absolutely. Now I'm just, I'm just, option. I'm just curious, Steve. Is, so is Comcast one of your providers? We have Comcast and we have Verizon or our two. I get it. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so Candy, you had mentioned earlier about uh, you know the the idea of of this type of interaction and the need for for this kind of connection to uh, exist once we're beyond the whole COVID-19 environment. Yeah. And, I, and I would agree completely. I think, uh, you know, There's to have, yeah, I think to have and to make these connections and have these connections available are going to be uh, always important. Uh, yeah. I think this is a program, I think we're gonna wanna see to go on in perpetuity. Uh, and I think this is an opportunity for the community center really to, to bring in more people that don't necessarily have the comfort level of going to the center or you know, the health capacity to do so. So I think this is just a, the beginning of, a, of an awesome program. And, 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 and even when we talk about pandemic versus you know, COVID versus post COVID, you know, I think what's becoming increasingly clear is that there's going to be this long period of we're not quite sure exactly what it is, you know, and yeah. during that time, access is really going to be limited. I was just talking to one of my, one of the, uh, I work with this, a lot of senior centers and the late woman from Hudson who was talking to a group of people inter internally today, because there's this whole question about, well, if folks have got a vaccination, can we say we can open the senior center, but only if you have a vaccination? 
you know, and that's a real question as to whether or not that's legitimate in a public space. So I think, you know, issues of actually using the senior center could really remain for a while is, you know, even though your population is going to be mostly vaccinated because of a, yeah. a bunch of, you know, kind of set of ancillary issues. So th that's just, just a great idea, just a great yeah. idea. And the other option too is these other devices that I've applied for, um, the ability to even, if we're open by appointment here at the Ashland Senior Center. So uh, ultimately they could bring the device or the device now and use our Wi-Fi. I mean, they could certainly sit in our lounge or they could certainly sit in the computer room and utilize our Wi-Fi if they wanted to. So um, that's also an option. Yeah. So, so, so does the program, so if they don't have internet, does the program basically give them like a hotspot? Something it gives them? No, so what will happen is, is they will open up an account through Comcast. It'll be in their name, but we will be paying the bill. The town will be paying it through this grant. And what will happen is um, they see. will get the modem. Like if it were just like, if I had just signed up for Comcast, they would have somebody come to their home. Either they could pick it up at the store or they could have somebody come to their home, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, I just had personally Comcast at my house yesterday and I felt incredibly safe. They stay 10 feet away from you um, and they wear a mask at all times and they're in and out. They, they want to get it done and they want to get it out. So I felt incredibly safe with them at my house yesterday and they will go into the senior's home and install the device for the internet. So it's a little modem. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so Steve. Whatever so their comfort level is. Yep. Right. So, Steve, this may be a, this may be a real, you know, a really good thing that as far as Comcast themselves are concerned in terms of, you know, they've got, you know, you're facing increasing numbers of people who are like cutting the cord. Right. Because they're concerned about the actual cost of doing, you know, doing right, re doing regular, um, you know, doing the regular watching through the regular programming channels. Right. But if they're if they're able to be connected this way, it really adds that other option for them. You know, it, it, it's really good. We know we know that seniors are you know a primary demographic that still in, that embrace cable, yeah. and uh, and that's something that I think will will continue. In fact, our last show, Arthur, we talked about that. We talked about you know the the connection that uh, local access and, and the senior population have. So you know I, it it just goes to uh, further emphasize you know Candy's comments about you know the future post COVID, you know, and uh, it, it'll still, uh, we'll still have these needs without question. So, uh, but it's, uh, so you're working on those two, those two uh, grants currently, one, one that you've brought to fruition, one that you're working on, on uh, getting funding for. Yeah. Anything else that you're thinking of uh, as you, you, you move forward with? Uh, um. Well, I, I actually do have a couple of other things. So I worked with a local uh, high schooler who is um, working on getting his Eagle Scout project completed. And he has reached out to us at the community center and he is making us four waist high raised garden beds. Um, so that's really something awesome to look forward to because once things get a little warmer, seniors can be outside, maybe they like to you know, do their seedlings inside. We've kind of given them, you know, the inkling already that, you know, hey, start your seeds now and bring them in and you can plant them. So we've got four of those coming at some point, um, hopefully in this early summer. So that'll be fantastic for them because they can We're, distance themselves with that and also be outside and feel comfortable. Yeah. That's another great idea. Where, where will they be? If I'm looking at the entrance to the building, is this going to be like off facing, to the right? If you're facing yeah. the building, yeah. they... If you look to your left, there's like a little patio area near some bushes and oh, yeah, on top yeah. of the parking area. So some they will be placed there. That's that that's really exciting. So so Candy, it sounds like you found your true vocation. I know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and here's the funny, here's the best part of all this. I used to volunteer when I was younger. My mother was the director at the Natick Senior Center, and my mother oh. retired retired out of the Chelmsford, Chelmsford Senior Center. Yeah. So my, this is my mother's, like, this was my mother's <laughs> life, right? And I volunteered a lot when she was in Natick. So I was like, oh, I'll never do that. Like, no. you know, <laughs> oh, no. I went into advertising and marketing. And then here I am in my later life of 
here I am advocating for seniors. No, the, the, oh, the I love it. The I really do. The community center in Ashland are fortunate to, to have you. And uh, thank you. You really, uh, you know, you add so much to the community center. And actually, you had mentioned Anna earlier. Yeah. Uh, Anna, Anna is our uh, activities director for elder services. And yes. we'll have, we'll have yeah, Anna. Coordinator. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, now, once again, I'm, I'm betraying my lack of memory. Is she new? Is she? Yeah. New? Yeah. Anna is new as well. Yes. And where is yeah. she coming from? So I believe she came from, oh, what's the name? She came from, a, um, I think, an assisted living or rehab. Look, yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great. So yeah, see, Steve has all these great people to bring, you know, to bring us there. And, <laughs> and, and I think, I think, once again, so I, I do a lot of work in, in a lot of senior centers and, and so much of the, of, the, of the question is to be forward thinking and be saying seniors, you know, can't be coming to us, right? Or some do and, and, and obviously you offer some special things by virtue of being a senior center because people can socialize there and all that jazz, you know. But in times like these, or, or and in, more in general, if you've got people who have really got disabilities and problems, a lot of my people, right? A lot of our people, right? Yeah, yeah. Are, they just, whether they're afraid to or nervous to, it, it, it's great that they have these programs. And then it's really an intro for them into the senior center. For, for many folks, I think it's the way that they start thinking about being connected to the senior community. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a really, as opposed to, oh, those are those old people. You know, as I keep talking to my clients, I'm like, you know, get over this. Just yeah. get over this, right? Yeah. It's like, forget about young and old. You know, it's about healthy and sick and dead. Yeah. And you know, if you're in the if you're in the healthy, just thank God that you're not one of the sick or the dead. Yeah. And and help each other out. You know, and it's not. You know, don't 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 shy away. I tell my young Frank and Marys, you need to participate. You know, like the volunteer efforts that you guys do. You need to help out, and then. If you get older and frail, they're going to help you out, you know? So yeah. the, the outreach person is such a crucial thing. It's just great. Yeah. I feel like everybody has a purpose. Um, and I think that once that purpose is missing, um, then I find then there's lack of other things. So do, does that make sense? Um, yeah. So I get a lot of those phone calls, <laughs> you know, their lack of purpose, you know, in this pandemic has kind of gone to the wayside. So we, I, I have to say, I have had more people that I've spoke to that I've never spoken to before. Yeah. And more recently, I think with the vaccine, which has opened it up even more, yeah. you know, hey, I didn't realize you could do this. I didn't realize you had that information. I didn't realize you had that resource. Right. So I've connected them, even just through the vaccine clinic we just held was so great because we touched upon so many residents that we hadn't touched upon before, yeah. which was great. Well, I think your marketing background, uh, Candy, yeah. is really going to be <laughs> invaluable for, for this. And, and, and I think there's an opportunity here really to make, uh, you know, connections for the future uh, with so many uh, of, our, of Arthur and I in my demographic. And, uh, you know, so I think it's, it's uh, again, I think we're very fortunate to have you as part of the team. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. But I, think that, and I, but I think that's a good kind of almost a segue because, you know, one of the things... So Steve Mitchell, even though he's younger than me, you know, is, is, is getting is also getting on. But and, but but I think you go you get to the you got to the crucial point. You know, I, I talked to I, I remember I remember um, there, I remember reading about a, a, a nun, this Catholic nun who's who said her her life, her life prayer every day was, Lord, let me live until I die. You know, I don't want to spend my life dying. I want to spend my life living, you know. And 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 to 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 have this the the senior center and you be the place where people can come to be, be to be understanding the way in which they want to be living for the rest of their lives. Right. You know, that's a real blessing. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great blessing. point. I mean, I mean yeah. Steve's found his right. Yeah. He goes to the selectmen's meetings. Right, makes him <laughs> feel terrific. Right. <laughs> I think that's a great point, uh, Arthur. You know, I think. Uh, you know, it's clear people, uh, and Candy mentioned this as well. I mean, people need a purpose. People yep. need connections. Yep. Uh, you know, people need uh, support. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate in Ashland, and I don't think we're new, unique in any sense. I think, uh, you know, communities may do things differently, but I think we're all kind of, you know, thinking the same things here. Yep. Uh, 
but again, it's just, it's great to have, uh, you know, the resources uh, of somebody like Candy that's coming up with, with those kinds of ideas and, and, and willing to bring them forth to the community. So Candy, the final thing is, I think you ought to think about asking for a raise. I think that, you know, <laughs> you're bringing in a lot of money from Ashland, you know, so we'll make this like a little ad town meeting. That would be great. Up. If I hear Arthur, I have nothing. I, I, I don't get involved with negotiations and raises. If it were up to me, absolutely. Oh, don't you love that? If it were up to me, yeah. they all say, right? So listen, th thank you, thank you very much, Candy, for doing this, and thank you, Steve. I think that that's you know, I, I, you know, what you what you do is really get to the heart of the sh what the point of this show is, which is to really to introduce people this way, you know, to a variety of things. And Candy, I think, you know, so who wouldn't want to be talking to you? So, oh, so you. one of the purposes of this show is to, for people to say, oh, she's really nice. I could give her a call, you know? <laughs> and, and so maybe it increases the number of the demand for those iPads. I am going to be looking forward to hearing about the first lawsuit, though, between the two seniors that are fighting over one of those iPads. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Arthur, you know, Arthur, you we like this. <laughs> so Arthur, we like to refer to Ashland as a, as a small town with a big personality, and I think Candy represents that big personality. Wow, oh, thank you. That's great. That's great. So listen, Candy, thank you so much. Steve, thank you so thank much for this. Thank you. Um, and, for, and for finding these all these great people. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this. So talk to her. She's really good, right? Just give her a call. <laughs> You've got an idea. Or if you want one of these on one of these devices, you know, this is really a wonderful, it's a wonderful initiative. Uh, it's great that Metro West Health Foundation is around and is helping out. You know, yeah. it's just, it's really wonderful. So yeah. thank you for watching. Oh, excuse me, Candy, uh, phone number. So if they want to reach yeah. you, what is the best number? The best number to reach me is 508-532-7945. And that's my direct line. So if you're looking for a purpose, call Candy. Thank you very much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.